California volcano once obliterated a forest and propelled ash 280 miles away. Expert says it offers a warning. This is by Ron Gaulin, Lee, Los Angeles Times, Lassen Peak Volcano. It's been rumbling lately, glowing hot rocks bounded down the slopes. Lava was welling up into a freshly created crater. Then, on this day 103 years ago, it exploded in a way California would never forget. It created a gigantic mushroom cloud that reached an altitude of 30,000 feet, could be seen as far away as Eureka and Sacramento, and sent volcanic ash as far away as 280 miles, reaching Elko, Nevada. It was the first volcanic eruption in the contiguous 48 states since the founding of the United States and the last until Mount St. Helens erupted May 18, 1980. And it was a reminder not only of how California is threatened by earthquakes, but how volcanoes are a part of life in the state that sits in the ring of fire. As the world focuses on volcanic shows in Hawaii and lately, uh, uh, of course, Kilauea and also La Palmas, the Lassen Peak volcano eruption offers a lesson of the threat closer to home. California is not just earthquake country, it's also volcano country, said Margaret Mengen, scientist in charge of the U.S. Geological Survey California's Volcano Observatory. There have been 10 eruptions in California over the past 1,000 years. 10 in 1,000 years. Finally support my Patreon account. The daily posts are five videos daily and they are totally different from what I have on my YouTube channel. Thank you so much for your support and that you find all my content so interesting. You'll find the Patreon account details in the description box. And in any given year, the chance of a major volcanic eruption in the state is about the same as the risk of a major earthquake on the San Andreas Fault. State geologist John Parrish once said, our nearly forgotten hazard is our volcanoes including the Lassen Volcano Center. Included in it, there are eight volcanic regions considered worth watching for future eruptions in California, according to USGS. From the far north of the state to near the Mexican border, most have been confirmed to have partly molten rock underneath them, eight volcanic regions. Some of California's most scenic wilderness spots are threatened by volcanic activity, more than 190,000 Californians live within a volcano hazard zone. Among them are people who live or work in the Long Valley region, that's a, a super volcano as we know, home to Mammoth Lakes in Mono County, a favorite destination for skiers from Southern California and areas in the shadow of Mount Shasta, such as the, the towns of Mount Shasta and Weed. Those cities are close enough to volcanoes that they may be in harm's way in the next eruption, Mangan said. Volcanoes in Lassen, Shasta, and Long Valley areas are capable of producing pyroclastic flows or surges when they do erupt. That's fast-moving flows of hot ash, rock, and gas sweeping down the sides of mountains of the type that killed 57 people when Mount St. Helens erupted in 1980. Most of the volcanoes are far from California's largest cities and several produce heat that's used in generate to generate electricity. Geothermal plants is what they have there. And what are the world's most productive geothermal power plants, such as the Salton Buttes, 160 miles southeast of Los Angeles, and the Clear Lake Volcanic Field, 85 miles north of San Francisco, which powers the Geyser Steam Field. But volcanic eruptions could have lasting repercussions that could affect all of California. Volcanic ash could bring down jetliners and disrupt hundreds of flights daily passing through Northern California or the Mammoth Mountain area. In 2010, the eruption of Iceland's Aya Fajajokul -Jo volcano forced the cancellation of 100,000 flights in a single week. Volcanic ash, when wet, is conductive and can disrupt high voltage lines that supply electricity to millions of Californian homes. Ash could disrupt travel on Interstate 5, the main route between California and Oregon. 
making windshields and making roads slippery even impassable, and it could contaminate water supplies to much of the state. California's large reservoirs are close to the Shasta and Lassen volcanoes. If there's any good news, it's that major volcanic activity is usually accompanied by some warning signs, and scientists have become much better at forecasting major events before they happen, enabling authorities to sound warnings to reduce the chance of deaths. We aim to make that number zero, said USGS volcano scientist Wendy Stovall. Volcano scientists have done well so far at forecasting hazards associated with Kilauea volcano on Hawaii's Big Island in recent weeks after the lava-containing crater collapse, scientists tracked patterns of earthquakes eastward suggesting magma was on the move and would eventually come to the surface. It did so in the neighborhood of Leilani Estates, about 25 miles east of the volcano summit, where lava destroyed dozens of structures. Scientists also correctly forecast the steam-driven explosions at the summit. Volcano science has, become, has come a long way since the deadly 1980 eruption at Mount St. Helens, which is the most active volcano in the Pacific Northwest and is in a remote part of Washington State. There were signs that magma was moving underneath the volcano in the months before the eruption, but how it unfolded caught scientists by surprise. Instead of from the top, the eruption occurred from the side of the volcano, sending magma pressurized with gas erupting out horizontally instead of vertically, said Seth Morin, scientist in charge of USGS Cascades Volcano Observatory. Because the initial direction of the pyroclastic flow was aimed horizontally, it traveled much faster on land from the summit than had been anticipated. Such pyroclastic flows are so hot, they will burn flesh to sheer, to sheer and sheer lungs, too much ash can also make it hard to breathe. California's volcanoes were more pro prolific in prehistoric times. About 760,000 years ago, the super eruption occurred at what is now known as Long Valley Caldera, erupting an astonishing 140 cubic miles of magma, covering much of east central California in glowing hot ash and blowing ash as far away as Nebraska. Mount St. Helens, by contrast, erupted 0.05 cubic miles of material. There's no sign that there is enough magma under Long Valley Caldera right now to cause another super eruption, Stovall said. An eruption can be preceded by months of volcanic instability. At Lassen Peak Volcano, where the magma is usually very viscous, kind of like a crystalline mush, New magma beneath began lifting uh, up the surface in 1914, rejuvenating the stagnant magma beneath the volcano, said USGS volcano scientist Mike Klein. Initially, the magma caused groundwater to heat up, producing steam-fueled explosions, eventually blasting out a crater at Lassen Peak. It would take about a year for magma to come up to the surface. By May 15, 1915, viscous lava started pooling up and filling up the crater. That had the effect of plugging up a hole at the volcano, and pressurized gas started collecting underneath it. On May 19, there was an explosion that blew blocks of hot rock down the slopes of the snow-covered volcano, Klein said, triggering a half-mile-wide avalanche of rock and snow. As the snow melted, it turned into a debris flow downstream for about nine miles. After two days of quiet, the big eruption finally came. On May 22nd, new magma ascended from below, and this time far more quickly, and exploded from the summit, causing a huge mushroom cloud eruption, similar to the kind that Pliny the Elder saw when Mount Vesuvius exploded in the year 79 AD. A pyroclastic flow was sent flying down the northeast flank of the volcano, creating a zone now known as the Devastated Area. The flow knocked trees down and destroyed everything in its path. Three square miles of wilderness was obliterated. The pyroclastic flow melted snow and sent a volcanic debris flow called a lahar, ranging down for 15 miles down Lost Creek and fueled floodwaters to hit Hat Creek. 
Steam explosions would continue through 1917. In the grand scheme, Lassen's eruptions were small. Relatively speaking, Mount St. Helens eruption in 1980 was 30 times bigger, Klein said. Sometimes it's not the pyroclastic flows that prove so deadly. Sometimes it's the ice and snow quickly melting during the eruption that pose the greatest threat. The 1985 eruption of Nevado del Ruiz in Colombia killed 25,000 people but was so deadly only because the melting water triggered mud flows. Klein said they didn't know it was coming. It happened at night. In the eruption of Indonesia's remote Krakatau Krakata volcano in 1883, it was the top of the mountain caving in that triggered a tsunami that struck Java and Sumatra Islands. Ongoing monitoring of volcanoes is critical to forecasting when something is amiss, Mangan said in a recent public lecture. USGS scientists detected such a problem in 2008 when a cluster of earthquakes suddenly inst suggested instability on the tiny island home to Kasatochi volcano in Alaska and where employees of the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Ser Service were located. An order went out to evacuate as there was nowhere to hide on the, that island and about 10 hours later the volcano erupted, Man Mangan said. The island was coated in pyroclastic flows and ash and lives were saved. This is from Los Angeles Times distributed by a Tribune content agency, itsonfish.org. Please leave your comments and thank you for your support.